And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Breakaway. Walter Stone was a big man, presenting a formidable appearance. It would seem as if he would be capable of standing up to almost anything. In some men, there's the will to do that. But in others, there's an instinct to run, to take the easy way out. And in spite of his forceful look, his seeming aggressiveness, Walter Stone was one of those. He'd settled many things in his life by running, settled them at least in his own mind by pushing them into the background through the satisfaction of motion, escape. And now, because Walter Stone found himself in a situation from which he couldn't run, he felt trapped and fenced in. His reactions were not of reason, but of a quivering bewilderment. And every shout and cry that reached his ears added to his frustration and confusion. Like an angry tide, rising, falling, the shouting and muttering of the crowd milling around outside the jail in Weatherby, Arizona. Inside there was fear and a desperation, the fear in the heart of Walter Stone, because the crowd wanted him, the desperation in the minds of the sheriff and his deputy, because they weren't certain they could prevent the crowd from taking him. And then the tide rose to a terrifying peak, a fury that somehow had to be resolved. Something, Sheriff. They're not giving up. Yeah, I see. Better get over to the prisoner. See what we can do. Sheriff. Sheriff, can't you talk to them? Explain. Explain what, Mr. Stone? That you're sorry now? Sorry you ran down and killed one of their most beloved citizens, old Fred Weatherby? I, I couldn't help it. Tell him I couldn't help it. You can help running off. Leaving Fred to die in the street. I, I got rattled. Sure. Rattled that you made it ten times worse. How do you mean? Do you deny that in making your getaway you ran directly through a crosswalk full of school children? I didn't hit any of them. I didn't. It wasn't your fault that you didn't. It was a miracle those children managed to escape. That's what got the crowd. They're completely out of hand, Sheriff. What do you think? I think we're not going to be able to stop them. Look, look, you can't give me up to them. You can't do that. I got my rights. Sure, you've got your rights. So have those school children, old Fred Weatherby. Not a good his rights did him. It doesn't make any difference. The important thing is what's happening now, right now. Sure. What's happening to you, eh, Mr. Stone, or what's about to happen? You, you're going to give him up, Sheriff? I... <laughs> no. No, I'm not going to give him up. It's my duty to protect my prisoners. My sworn duty. <laughs> Holly, Jim. Yeah? You better take Stone upstairs. Uh, upstairs? Uh, yes. And get him out of back window to the roof of the next building. Then over to the courthouse. The courthouse? Yes, my car's parked there. So here. Here, Jim. Here, yeah. the keys. Yeah. There you are. Drive him to Milburg. Have them put him in jail there. Okay. Come on, Stone. Oh, what if they get us? There's a chance they won't this way. Otherwise, I can't guarantee anything. Well, sure. Sure, I'm right with you. All right. Up these stairs. And remember, stick close. Uh, Sheriff. Yes? Can you call ahead to Milburg? Tell him we're coming. No. 
Mark cut the phone wires. If I hadn't, I'd have some state troopers down here. All right, go on, Jim. We'll just have to take a chance all the way around. It's terrifying, isn't it, Walter? Like a nightmare. Ever since you were caught only a few miles from the spot where you ran a man down and tried to get away. Got caught and put in jail on a hit-and-run charge. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? Yes. There's the cold, simple fact that you can't stand any heavy questioning by the police because of your past record. A record of unsavory escapades, occasional crime, and one prison term. You must escape more than that milling crowd in the street below. And almost without thinking about it, you know that you're watching for your chance. Even as you and the sheriff's deputy make your way along a ledge. Drop to the roof of the building next door. We'll make it, Stone. Nobody out back here. The courthouse? It's just around the corner? That's right. You don't have to pass the mob. You've been a big help to you. I haven't meant to be. I just follow orders. I got no stomach for hit and run artists. No. no I guess not. Come on. You can drop into the alley from the fire escape here. You mean I can drop into the alley? Huh? <laughs> this is as far as you go, Jim. I just want the keys to the sheriff's car and your gun. Okay, Jim. Looks like you need a little more. <clears throat> You're certain the deputy won't revive for a while, aren't you, Walter? Quite a while. And not without medical attention. You make your way down into the alley... Dart swiftly around the corner to the courthouse where the sheriff's car is parked. But there's a girl standing there waiting for someone. You wonder what to do and decide very suddenly. Get in the car. What? Get in, I said. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not yelling for anybody. Now get in or I'll drag you in. Nobody's telling the sheriff I drove off alone, sister. Not even you. So you're going to ride for a few miles. Come on. That's better. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. The sheriff's car. Nobody will stop it. You just keep quiet, sister, and everything will be all right for both of us. If you're like most drivers, balmy spring days such as we have at this time of year make you want to head your car for the open highway and go somewhere. And going places just naturally makes you more concerned about gasoline mileage, the thing signal gasoline is famous for. Mileage, in fact, has been one of the principal reasons for signal's amazing growth in popularity. From a small start in Southern California, signal's popularity has grown and grown. Until today, signal stations serve seven Pacific Coast states from Canada to Mexico. And wherever signal is sold, it is known as the go-farther gasoline. But mileage, mind you, is just one of the benefits you notice when you switch to signal. After all, to give you such good mileage, signal gasoline has to help your engine run more efficiently. And when your engine runs more efficiently, you also enjoy peppy pickup, smooth power, the things that make driving more fun. That's why motorists with a zest for driving pleasure, as well as those who appreciate economy, are both enthusiastic about Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. momentarily, hasn't it, Walter? The dread, dulling fear that encircled your heart and mind back in the tiny jail. It's gone. And the shouts of the angry, determined crowd are gone, too. And there's only an open highway ahead of you, and the almost certain prospect of escape. The sheriff's car will help, won't it? Because until they find his deputy on the roof of that building, find him and revive him, 
You're certain that no one will know you're driving the car yourself. You let up on the accelerator now. Glance at the terrified girl beside you. She's very quiet, isn't she, Walter? Almost numb with fear. I, uh, guess you wonder what I'm going to do with you. You got yourself into this, you know. Couldn't leave any witnesses back there. You have a witness. Anyone who does a thing as terrible as you did always has a witness. Look, don't start preaching. They'll catch you. You must know that. What were you doing at the courthouse? Waiting for the sheriff. I wanted to talk to him about... about Uncle Fred. Who's he? Fred Weatherby. The man you ran down, killed in the street. Your uncle? I'm Doris Weatherby. My Uncle Fred was one of the kindest, most beloved men in the town. He's been county road commissioner for years. Listen, I couldn't help it. I didn't see him step out. They said you drove off. Why? I... I had my reasons. No one could have good enough reasons to do a thing like that. They said if you'd helped him, call the doctor right away. Uh, train, you gotta stop. You do stop for some things, don't you? Where your own life is involved. I get it. I feel sorry for you in a way, Mr. Jones. Such a big man. In appearance, I mean. But so small. So very, very small inside. I get it, I said. Stop talking like that. All right, Mr. Jones, because you really might hit me instead of running. Huh? Over there, police. Police? Where? Here. What are you doing? Come back here. Why, oh, you little fool. The girl leaped from the car so suddenly that it leaves you helpless, doesn't it, Walter? You weren't even watching her because of her remark about the police. And of course there were none. Just a trick. But you must catch her, Walter. You're not far enough away from the town, are you? And if Doris reaches the sheriff, talks to him. You'll have to abandon his car immediately. You jump out, race down the railroad tracks in pursuit. But it's no use. You stop and listen for her, peering into the darkness, wondering what to do. The fear is starting again, isn't it, Walter? You're confused and trembling as you head back and stop just in time to see a pair of highway patrolmen looking over the car. You're so close you can hear their voices. Sheriff's car from Weatherby. Funny he'd leave it here so close to the railroad track. Well, maybe he's around here somewhere, Dave. Maybe he's... Hey! What's wrong? Somebody hiding out there. You see in the field. Come out of there, you! Not a chance. Come on, after him, Dave! Cut across the field, running a zigzag course. The shots of the highway patrolman whistling over your head. And then you can hear them coming after you. You wonder if you can go on, don't you, Walter? If perhaps you shouldn't give up. But somehow you don't. Somehow you summon the strength to outdistance them. You make your way down a shallow creek bed. You stumble into a growth of underbrush and huddle there quietly, almost afraid to breathe. You hear the two patrolmen coming towards you. Fred, Joe. What if we leave him? I didn't. I was firing over his head. Uh, I wish we knew what it was all about. Whoever he was, he must have been driving the sheriff's car. Beats me. Yeah. Let's go back. We'll call in a report. Right. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. It was close, wasn't it, Walter? And you wonder what you're going to do now. For one thing, you remain hidden for at least another 20 minutes. Finally move out of the creek. And then through the trees, you catch sight of a light in the farmhouse. Cautiously make your way up to the front door. Uh, who's there? That you, Hank? Look, mister, my name's Edwards. Ran out of gas. Have to get to the next town. My, my wife's sick. Oh, I'm Jess Jensen. Out of gas, huh? Yeah. Oh, now that's too bad. Quiet! Skip back in your house! Now, let's see. You say you're out of gas, huh? That's right. Well, I got a drum of gasoline out in the garage. I'll fill up a can for you, young fella. Yes, I can do that. You, uh, have a car? Yeah. Oh, you mean you'd like me to drive you back to yours? Yeah. yeah well, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. Hey, wait here, young fella. I'll go get the keys. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. It's a break, isn't it, Walter? Finding a man as cooperative as Jess Jensen. Your hand tightens around the gun you hold in your coat pocket. 
But you don't want any noise, do you? Awaken the others in the house. So you wait for him to come down and follow him out to the garage. You decide to maneuver into position, get behind him. You bring the gun butt down on his head hard. You're sure it will be as simple as that. Then you can get away in his car. You watch for an opening. He's a big man, isn't he, Walter? And you know you can't afford to miss. Well, I think this container will do it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Be enough gas to get you to the next town. There's a couple of stations there. Okay. How about a hand? Here, hold it while I tip the drum over. Well, here, take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, you new around these parts? Mm, no, just traveling through. Okay, here we go. Move over a little, huh? Yeah, sure. Hold that can up a bit. That's it. Easy now, easy she goes. Oh, that does it. <laughs> sort of spilled over a little, didn't it? Get any on you? No, no. Okay, there we are. How far down the road did you say you were? A uh, couple of miles, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll be with you in a second as soon as I mop this gas up. I don't like to leave it like that. It's the opportunity you've been waiting for, isn't it, Walter? You watch him as he picks up a rag, and he kneels his back to you. You move slowly toward him. Then as you bring the gun out of your pocket... Drop it, Mr. Stone. What? Drop it, I said. Hey, what, what, what's going on here? What's the idea? The idea, Mr. Jensen, is you're about to help an escaped prisoner. Escaped prisoner? What? Hey, that's my gun you got there. That's right. I was just coming into your yard when I saw the two of you leaving the house. I've lived in these Arizona parts long enough to know there's usually a shotgun behind every ranch kitchen door. Say, i seen you somewhere before, ain't I? I'm Doris Weatherby, stenographer in the county assessor's office. That's right, sure. Here, better let me have that gun. With pleasure. Thanks. All right, now then, what's this all about? That man, his name is Walter Stone. He escaped from the jail back in Weatherby. Did he? That's ridiculous. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Here, give me that gun. <laughs> What were you aiming to do with this forty-five, young fella, when my back was turned, huh? Look, you got this all wrong. I, I... don't think so. Do you have a phone, Mr. Jensen? Nope. I guess we'll just have to take him back to town and pick up here. You drive, miss? Yes, of course. All right, get going, Stone. Okay. Okay, you win. I, uh, don't suppose the condemned man could have a cigarette. I never use them. I've got some. Here. Keep the pack. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, sweetheart. I'm eternally grateful. Yes, very grateful, aren't you, Walter? The idea occurs to you suddenly, doesn't it? As your gaze wandered to the gas spilled on the floor of the garage. It's a gamble, isn't it? But well worth the try. You light the cigarette. And then as you inhale deeply, you flip the match toward the gas-soaked rag on the floor. A sudden rush of air, a bright blue flame startles Jess, and he turns. You reach out, knock the shotgun from his hands, and race for the door. Come back, Stone! You won't get away! Stop! Stop now! Shoot! Stop! But you know that Jess isn't going to shoot right away, don't you, Walter? With your gun and his lying on the floor and the fire rising rapidly. Over your shoulder, you can see Doris helping him try to battle the flames. And then you lose sight of them through the trees. Good evening. What you the I... doc? Why, yes, I'm Dr. Summers. Okay, inside. Now, see here. What... I don't want any trouble, see little guy and your bones won't stand any rough stuff, so play it smart. Do as I say and you won't get hurt. You're Walter Stone, aren't you? The radio... Yeah, that's here. right. Skip the lecture. What is it you want? I've got a couple of bad cuts from a barbed wire fence. Patch me up. No, take your car keys. My car... That is yours, isn't it? Parked alongside the house? Yes. Don't be a fool. You won't get away. Sure I will, Doc, and you're going to help me. Pick up that telephone. Pick it up, I said. I'm not afraid of you, Stone. You might as well take your hand out of your pocket. I 
don't think you have a gun there. Pretty smart, aren't you? Maybe I can find something to persuade you. What's in this cabinet? Be careful. Be careful those test tubes. What's in them, Doc? I... I've been making some experiments. What kind of experiments? You wouldn't understand. Important? When people's lives are at stake, I would consider... Sure, them... sure, Doc. Look, with a sweep of my hand, I could... No, don't. Pick up the phone. All right. Call the police. The police? You see, Doc, I'm figuring on heading south. The Mexican border isn't far away. I don't understand. You call the cops. Tell them you just came from a farmhouse 20 miles north of here. You treated a man for a bullet wound. Didn't like the story he told you. You think he's Walter Stone. Get the picture? Yes. Yes, I get the picture. All right, the phone. Take care of it. Operator, this is Dr. Summers. Did you connect me with the police? Say it's an emergency. It's uh, an emergency. Thank you. Come on, act excited now. We gotta believe you. And no tricks. No tricks. Just think of those test tubes, Doc. I wouldn't hesitate, you know. I know. Hello? A sergeant? Uh, this is Dr. Summers out on Turner Road. That's right. I, uh, I want to report something. Suspicious character. A suspicious character. Yes. Yes, a man I was forced to treat for a bullet wound. He... He... Go on, kill him. He told me a strange story. I think he might be that man they were talking about on the radio. Walter Stone. The one who killed Fred Weatherby? That's a ticket. What? Oh, yes, Sergeant. He's hiding in the old Wilson farmhouse, about 20 miles north of here. Good. <laughs> All right, Doc. Now, let's see. You got a basement here? Yes. Show me. Down the stairs. But I... Just... Down the stairs! Oh, don't worry. It's going to tie you up, Doc. See, I can't have you getting back on that phone the second I leave or hollering. Do you really expect to get away with this? Your car is almost as good as the sheriff's, maybe better. I'll stick to the back roads. Look, I, I wouldn't... Wouldn't I... what, Doc? I wouldn't keep running. That's all. Running? Hmm. I'll decide that. I'm the only one who decides whether I run or not. <laughs> As you leave Dr. Summers, bound and gagged in the basement of his home, it doesn't seem possible that only a few hours have passed since you heard the angry crowd outside the jail, following your arrest for running down and then leaving old Fred Weatherby. You slip behind the wheel of Dr. Summers' car and head south. The road to Mexico is open. You're certain of that, aren't you, Walter? Yes. Because you know at this moment the police cars in the area are converging on a farmhouse 20 miles to the north. A few minutes after you leave the doctor's house, you turn off the main highway into a side road. Presently, pull up with a gas station. Evening, sir. Door up? Yeah, might as well. Almost empty. Good thing you stopped. There isn't another station between here and the border. How far is it to the border? Oh, about 30 miles. Let you take the shortcut. Oh? Yeah, I'm knocked off about five miles. <laughs> Cops again. They sure been busy tonight. Looking for somebody, I guess. Mm. Seems to be in an awful hurry. Heading north. Uh, you did say fill her up, didn't you? That's right. Good thing, too, that you got here when you did. I was just about ready to close up and go home. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm pretty lucky, huh? That you are, mister. <laughs> that you are. <laughs> The two things you want to make sure of when you buy a new battery for your car are one, power. Plenty of power for quick starting, plus the many electrical needs of your car. 
And two, long life, so you won't have the expense of buying another battery soon. Well, tonight I want to tell you why. For power and economical long life, you just can't beat today's new Signal Deluxe battery. First of all, improved microporous rubber separators allow freer flow of acid between the plates, yet are impervious to the action of the acid. Result, Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power. Secondly, Signal Deluxe batteries are guaranteed not just for the usual 12 or 18 months, but for a full 30 months on a service basis. That makes the cost per month so low, you're actually saving money while you're enjoying the extra power and dependability of a Signal Deluxe battery. So before you buy any battery, get your Signal Dealer's trade-in offer for your old battery. Find out his convenient credit terms. Prove for yourself that today's smartest battery buy is today's finest battery. The new, improved Signal Deluxe battery at Signal Service Station. In the glare of the spotlights from the ambulance and police cars on the road above, the sheriff made his way down the steep embankment to the wrecked auto in the ravine. He examined the still figure in the car, talked briefly with the ambulance doctor, then turned away and walked to where another man was standing. You the fellow to put in the call? Yeah. Me and my partner run the signal gas station down the road. Did you see this happen? No, but I must have come by right afterwards. On the way home, I spotted the busted guardrail and stopped. I saw the wrecked car here. Mm -hmm. Funny thing. The dead man stopped at our station and asked me how far it was to the border. His name was Walter Stone. He was still alive any fun? Yeah. The ambulance driver over there said Stone would have come out of it okay if I'd reached Dr. Summers in time. Couldn't get it? Nope, I phoned him, but he didn't get any answer. Because he must have been tied up somewhere, huh? Well, it isn't hard to figure out how this happened. The road doing the shape of thing. Stone must have been going along at a good clip. Smacked into the rocks and dirt up there. If I'd known the landslide hadn't been cleared off, I could have warned him. I saw the landslide pilot earlier this afternoon called the road commissioner's office. They said they'd send a crew out. The road commissioner? Who'd you talk to? Why, Fred Weatherby, of course. He's the county road commissioner. You haven't heard about Fred, then? What do you mean? I guess you never got to tell that road crew to come out here. You see, old Fred Weatherby was killed in town this afternoon. Hit and run driver. This dead man here in the car, Walter Stone, is the man that hit him. for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Because this month marks the 50th anniversary of the American Automobile Association, Signal Oil Company is happy tonight to congratulate the AAA and its three and one-half million members for the splendid job this worthy organization has done, not only in promoting driving pleasure, but also driving courtesy and driving safety. Everyone who uses America's streets and highways whether it be for driving, riding, or walking, can be thankful there's a triple A. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Raymond Burr, Elizabeth Root, Bill Boucher, Harley Bear, Britt Wood, and Herbert Litton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden which follows immediately over most of these states. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>